So Andrew, you were the Smith & Wesson brains behind this part of it. I mean, this is cool, everyone's shooting it. Talk to me about the different flavors we have. I know we've got 38 Special, we've got 32, but I mean, different looks and finishes. Yeah, so it was one of the things we're looking at, you know, what is the consumer like? And of mm -hmm. course, it's hard to come out with one product that pleases all. So, you know, whether it's a silver finish or the black finish, um, we thought, well, let's do both. And then oh. we'll have it in the 38, we'll have it in the 32, and then hopefully we're ticking most boxes for most people. Yeah. And uh, and then, you know, there was a bit of debate about grip color on the guns. Uh, and, you know, we started out originally, Jason at Lipsy's was thinking about uh, Predator Green, actually, and then we're yeah. looking at some of the other. So don't tell them what you were thinking about, because yeah. then they're going to be no, like, well, do it, yeah. do it, do it. <laughs> we can always do things later. They can, they can aftermarket <laughs> swap out these, or are these custom to these, to these guns? Well, at the moment, uh, Lipsy's and VZ are working out. Because these were these were not these just are, VZ grips they just took. They actually no, these were these design. were customized for this project. Okay. So I like the the color, but color is so subjective. Yeah. But you were telling me your favorite part of all the things you guys did to this is what? Sights. Why? And it was because. With the grips, if you didn't like our sound of factory grips, mm -hmm. you could always change those with an aftermarket supplier. Right. And it would, you know, undo the screw, take off the grip, and you're done. Mm -hmm. Okay, that'll cost you more, but it was still something you could readily achieve and the average person could achieve without any issue. Right. But the sights, if you if you don't like the sights in our guns, and if you look at the 642, 442, the standard, they're rudimentary sights, they're fit for their purpose, but they're very basic. Right. And so if you weren't happy with that, your ability to change that is extremely difficult. And sights can be a very personal preference Absolutely. thing of, of your sight picture and what your eyes see best. Yeah. But I mean, the green, everyone knows green jumps out to our eye yep. a little bit better. Yep. And I mean, it's easy to pick up. I like that it's got a big old U. You're not having to figure out where you're trying to hold. Um, I mean, everyone's kind of enjoying these. They're really cool, man. Yeah, and you know, the black U notch with a big bright green uh, excess side front, that's, you know, it's, that's the current seems to be the popular trend. That's mm -hmm. where everyone seems to be gravitating towards. And so, you know, perhaps if we had done the project 20 years ago, it would have been a three dot. Sure. But today this is, seems to be where everyone's gravitated towards. And so, um, and I, frankly, I think it, they're fantastic. You know, they work in all lighting conditions and they really do give you a, a fantastic visual on your sights, easy to get accuracy on the target, even at longer range. What would you uh, say to somebody who looks at this and says, this is neat, but there's a lot of gun owners who have a lot of polymer pistols. You guys make them, they're yep, great. Yep. But if they've never had one of these, why would they consider getting the new Ultimate Carry J-Frame? So the intent with this project really was to create the best offensive J-Frame revolver that we, Smith & West could make. And uh, I think we've gone a hell of a way to accomplishing that. Yeah. And uh, so if, you, if you're not a revolver person, and, and I get it, you know, it's, uh, I, if you look at my collection, now I have a lot of revolvers, I have to say, but <laughs> there's a lot of semi-autos in there. And, but it does offer you some advantages if you, you know, Usual thing if you want to just walk out, take the garbage bin outside and, mm -hmm. just, and you, you feel like you need to have a firearm on you for personal protection. Through just throwing a striker fired pistol in your pocket, not a good idea. Not a great idea. You know, yeah, it gives you options. It does give you options. It's, it's, the, it's the run to the grocery store milk, milk yep. run gun. Yep. Um, but I think it's great to have options or ways to carry, places to carry. And if you don't have a revolver, and especially if you're your interest in guns is centered around personal protection, this is probably the place to start. Yeah, I, I really think so. And, you know, I would definitely say for people who haven't shot a lot of revolvers, really strongly consider the 32 h and mm -hmm. Significantly less recoil. You have the option of sh shooting 32 longs, which have, you know, similar recoil in general statement to 22 long rifle. Right. It's, it's a fantastic option. People from all experiences can handle that gun. And, uh, you know, that really is, is, it's the one to look for, I think. Very cool. Thanks, yep. Andrew. Thanks for giving us the rundown. These are cool. Enjoy and see you. No, thank you. Appreciate it. To see all of Gun Talk's content, go to guntalk.com, guntalktv.com, or sign up for the Gun Talk newsletter.